Welcome back to another glorious episode of Living with a Rotary featuring Felix the Magnificent and rebuilt RX-8. You join me back in Rotary Revs and today what we're going to be doing... No, hold on, hold on, hold on. What's that? You hold it right there. I know what the people want. And that's you? Yeah. Yeah, I actually saw the comments. You guys love this guy <laughs> a lot more than you love me. Anyway, what are we doing today, Josh? Today we got your car back for a uh, post rebuild running in oil change and a little dyno session. We're going to tune it, optimize fueling, and then we are uh, going to get some flames out of it as well. Flames, you say? Flames. <laughs> Let's crack on. All right. Okay, so we've got some Miller's oils, 1040 semi-synthetic oil. Uh, this is part of their Trident series. And obviously because it's semi, it burns off nicely. Unlike a fully synthetic, which was just burning inside the engine, which leads to carbon, obviously. We're putting about 3.8 liters in here. It's like looking at golden syrup, you know, when you put it on your pancakes. I know you like pancakes. Putting a dipstick back in. We'll put the oil cap back on. We're gonna start it. Yay! It's a good start, is that? Right, so pull the dipstick out, check the oil. What we recommend is anywhere above half. Yeah, we need a little bit more. Just a little bit. Yeah, that's better. Just above halfway. With the oil now changed, it's time to get Felix into the dyno chamber. putting these adapters on so we can mount the car to the hub dyno. The reason why we use the hub dyno is because it's safer. If ever we get a high powered car, there's no chance of uh, tires slipping or anything like that, affecting figures and just tuning in general. Not as cool as a rolling road, granted, but it's a bit more of a scientific way of getting power down, more accurate way of getting power down as well. With hub dynos as well, if you had the capacity, you could optimize things like launch control and traction control systems in general. The only real niggle with hub dynos is just set up. It takes a bit longer. So you've had yours on the dyno here, right? Multiple times, yeah. Mine is a first race extension prototype. That put down 195 wheel horsepower. The bridge port is exactly the same on the race extension, but what makes it a race extension is uh, the exhaust ports. They've been enlarged beyond what Mazda originally made them, and they're beyond what a street port template can offer as well. So it's completely done by hand, everything's custom, and uh, like I say, it's all trial and error at the moment. All the parts in it are shite. <laughs> you know, chattered housings, um, second hand seals and a lot, but what was most convincing was that despite that it made a good good figure which is why i still think that the idea is going to be quite good one of the most noticeable things about the race extension is that it's very revvy like there's obviously a lot of flow out of the engine for it to rev that high and be so responsive still exploring whether it's going to be beneficial for na engines or boosted engines boosted rx8s are pretty rare in the uk i think it'll have to be mine that gets boosted to uh see if that actually works because it is a mighty little engine. With the RX-8 set up on the dyno, it's time for Denton to start the tuning process. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll analyze the short-term fuel trims and long-term fuel trims, make sure that the closed loop fueling is doing what it should be. Um, once I've optimized that sort of side of the fueling, um, I'll move on to doing some wide open throttle runs, making sure the fueling is all right in the open loop um, through a full sweep pull. Um, and then I'll go on to optimising the ignition timing and the timing on the intake box. Yeah. And how are we going to get flames? How do you do that? Um, I've, been, I've been saying flames so many times, haven't I? We'll give it a few. A little bit. And then orange stuff should come out of the back. Yeah? Yeah. Amazing. Sweet. Well, uh, over to D. <laughs> Pops and bangs enabled. Pops and bangs enabled, already? Yeah. Yep. 
just, can you show me now? It's just right into here, so yeah. <laughs> You've got a minute to wait. Be bloody patient, you <laughs> southern bastard. Did it have a cord limit on it before? No. I've just put one on it. When the end is below 65 degrees, it won't go above 5,000 RPM. Okay. How does it cut out? Is it like a... No, it's like a limiter. Oh, right, okay. Oh, wow! We call it a minimap package. Um, so, like, if someone's got the D585 coils, we'll do the ignition dwell, fan temperatures. It's the little things that count, and pops and bangs, obviously. Amazing. Oh. Can you get rid of that really annoying beep? Nope. D then switches on the monstrous ventilation system, which, as you can see, drops the temperature to Arctic levels. It's blowing a bloody girl in there, I tell that. Unable to feel my body, I resorted to cardio, which is one of my least favourite things to do. We've done the steady state part of the tuning session. We can set the dyno to hold at a certain RPM, meaning that we can run through each load cell, checking fueling in each cell rather than just checking it for wide open throttle. This means that we can get the short term fuel trims to as close to zero as we can, um, which aids a nicer drive, um, sharp throttle response and better fuel economy, as well as making more power. So we're flashing the first revision of the map now. It's just finished. I'm going to go through, check all the bits that I've just done, make sure all the changes did what I wanted them to do, and then we're going to move on to some wide up and throttle tuning, uh, see if we can get some flames. It's making more than it was last time at 5,000 RPM, and you've still got 3,000 RPM left. As D starts to open the taps, and with Felix successfully starting to ignite his heavy breath with flames, Progress was quickly halted because something wasn't right. It's wanting a lot of fuel at the top and the AFR is starting to lean out as we go further up. Is that what, fuel pump? Maybe. Trying to diagnose the issue and praying that it wasn't a broken fuel pump, the guys check the injectors hoping for an easy fix. But luck does not seem to be on our side today. Alright, so, so what's the verdict? It's f***ed. Yeah, proper f***ed. So we've got, what? 170 wheel horsepower. Yep, at 7,000 RPM. And we've got another two grand to go. Yep, and we think the uh, fuel pump's f***ed. It's what? F***ed. Ah, oh, right, okay. So there's no more we can do, uh, but we do have pops and bangs. Yep. And we do have flames. That's all you're gonna get this week. Join us next week where we'll maybe do another video. Do some. <laughs> bang! No bangs, well. Bangs out of there, no bangs <laughs> at this side. And on that happy note, goodbye. You can have the last words, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> well, that was a very unsuccessful uh, day because the fuel pump has decided to kill itself, which is really annoying. Uh, so we've got to be back at some point for a new fuel pump to get the tune finished and then we can carry on with this glorious series because you guys have been enjoying it very much. Speaking of which, you can watch the rest of the series right here. You can subscribe to Car Throttle right there. And don't forget to check out the Car Throttle shop. Which way is he going? Down there! See you next week. Josh, pay me out. <laughs>